Baby cheese wheels. Oh my gosh, you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been such a long time since I filmed the video. I'm pretty sure it's been like three weeks. I've been trying to get this video out for such a long time now, but my month has just been so, so busy, but I'm so excited to be back. And for today's video, I have a DIY Walmart Festival Clothes video for you guys. Yes, both Coachella weekends have passed already, but I figured I'd still put this video out because there are a lot of festivals coming out, like Like Heaven, there's Life is Beautiful, EDC. So just a lot of music festivals coming up this year so I figured I would still put this video out. I know I always thrift for these type of videos but I figured that the likelihood of you guys finding the same exact piece at a thrift store is very unlikely. So everyone has a Walmart in their area. I just decided to get some pieces from Walmart turn them into cute items that you guys would actually wear because some people still have that idea of like Walmart not having cute items which they actually do but in this video I'm going to show you how you can make it a lot cuter. If you guys are new to my channel welcome my name is Nava Rose it's been a long time so you guys probably haven't heard of me. Anyways if you guys want to subscribe to my channel you can do so down below and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next time that I post. Also I don't think there's also. I think that's pretty much it. Let's jump into this video. Okay so first we're going to start with this two piece set since it's one of the easiest and all you need is a pair of girls leggings and some scissors. I snagged these leggings in a size large from the little girl section and they were less than four dollars. First fold your leggings in half and then cut the length that you want for your shorts. With the remainder leg pieces cut them up the seams to open them up. Then you want to place each piece on top of each other with the right sides kissing. To make things easier, I just cut the sides so I have a nice clean rectangle and then I sewed a straight stitch along the sides to make two side seams and honestly that's pretty much it, you're like basically done. I decided not to hem the top and the bottom opening only because I wanted full maximum stretch and I felt that I would definitely break some seams if I did so. Plus I actually kind of like the raw look but if you guys don't then you guys could always tuck it underneath like so. Now for a more advanced tutorial, but I mean it's still really easy. We have this two piece set from an oversized t-shirt. What you need is an oversized tee, a pair of booty shorts just for reference, some scissors, fabric chalk, pins, and elastic. I found this tee in the men's section for only $9. Okay, so before we jump into this tutorial, I want to touch base on something real quick. I posted this on Instagram and it got huge, major backlash because I used a Michael Jackson shirt. And I just want to let you guys know on here that it is just a shirt. The only reason why I used this Michael Jackson shirt was because it had the most vintage band type of graphic design out of all of those and that was the look I was going for. It was just for this tutorial. Nothing more than that, I am not supporting his actions or the accusations made upon him so that's all enjoy i also wanted to thank everyone who came to my defense on instagram but besides that let's jump back into our tutorial so first you want to cut across the tee where you want to crop it for the bottom half of the tee use your shorts as reference for how long you want your bottoms to be and then cut off any excess material then cut up the side so you have two pieces Fold the front in half and then use your shorts to create a shape. I added lots and lots of space around the edges to make sure that I have room to work with because remember guys, you can always take away fabric but you can't add back fabric once it's cut. Once you're happy with your shape, you can cut it out. Next, fold the back piece in half and then place the front pattern on top. I aligned the side and the bottom and also made sure there was about one inch of space on the side seam just in case I needed that extra room. I traced the tiny inseam edge and the top edge and then from there I'll next draw a curved edge for my back rise seam. Honestly guys this isn't the actual way to draw out a back rise seam but this is what we have to work with and it actually worked so there you go. A curved seam will fit your butt and it's so important because everyone knows that your back is curvier than your front. Then cut your back shape out once you're done. Hit along the back rise edge and sew along it with a straight seam to complete your back piece. Place both front and back pieces on top of each other with the right sides kissing and then match up the crotch seam to pin it. 
You'll notice that the bottom edges where the leg opening is doesn't match up, but that's because we sewed the back rice seam and it took some allowance, so it's totally fine if it's off. You also want to match up and pin the sides, and then after pinning, sew along the crotch edge and both sides with a straight stitch. Next, cut off any uneven edges from the top and leg openings if there are any. You also want to add mini slits along the crotch edge because this will relieve any tension in that area. Fold over the top edge about 1 inch or just big enough for your elastic to fit through and then you want to sew a hem along the edge to make a tunnel for your elastic. Be sure to leave about a 2 inch gap before closing the hem so you have an opening to fit your elastic through. Take your elastic and pin one end down and then add a safety pin to the other end. Feed the safety pin through the opening and then through the tunnel until you reach the other side. And I just realized I literally say these exact words in every single tutorial because I do the same thing in every single video. But yeah, I mean, that's just me always adding elastic to everything. Once it's made its journey through, take both ends and sew them together. Stuff it back into the tunnel and then finish the hem to close it up. This is 100% optional, but these waistband string things are trending right now. So if you want to add one, all I did was take the scraps, I folded it into thirds, and then I sewed it down on one edge using a zigzag stitch. I then stitched the two ends together, and then there you have it. You basically have a oversized hair dye. <laughs> This honestly has become my new favorite top, I am not kidding you. And there is no materials needed for it because it's a no sew tutorial and all you need is just the top. This was in the women's section for under $10 in case you guys were wondering. First cut across the top where you want your crop top to end. Once you get around the middle section, cut downwards to make one end of the tie. Repeat to make the other side of the tie and then cut across the whole back. For the back side, I cut a slit in the center and then I cut up towards the armpits. Then just cut a diamond shape from the center and then tie the ends around the top where the crisscross and the lace detail is. You can leave the ties as is or you guys can cut it and then tuck it behind the knot. To finish the top, I unbuttoned the first two buttons and then I tied the ends around the center. And that is it. That's all there is to it. Like, girl, this top is so cute and it was from Walmart and it took me less than five minutes to make. And last but not least, we have this rhinestone fishnet set. For this one, you need a bikini top, which I got at Walmart for $5, some fishnet stockings also from Walmart, rhinestones that I found in the craft section, some scissors, E6000 glue, and a small piece of cardboard. The first thing you want to do is cut the length for your fishnet shorts. Keep in mind, you guys, that these are stockings, so I would definitely suggest cutting the length a little longer than what you want. Take the leftover leg piece and cut down the side to open it up. Next, sew the mesh on top of the bikini top. Okay, so this is actually optional. You guys could just go ahead and glue the rhinestones directly onto the bikini without the mesh, but I kind of liked how adding the fishnet made it more of a cohesive two-piece set. I also actually didn't use any pins at all when I was sewing. I found it was just easier to stretch it over the bikini top and then sew on top. Once that is done, you can glue all the rhinestones that your little bedazzled heart desires. The fishnet is a little tricky to glue on, so that's why you need the cardboard to help stretch it out and prevent any glue from getting onto the other side. You can also play around with the different size rhinestones like I did, or you could just use one size of rhinestone. So I wanted to do this specific tutorial mainly because I really, really wanted this set from Dolls Kill, but they sold out so fast. So instead I decided to DIY it and I figured someone else could benefit 
benefit from it if I made a tutorial. By the way, my high waist bikini bottoms are thrifted. And also on another note, I should have added way more rhinestones, but this works just as well. Thank you guys so so much for watching this video if you guys enjoyed it and want to see more walmart uh diy upcycles give this video a big thumbs up to let me know that if you guys want to connect with me on social media all my socials are at the nava rose also i'm going to like heaven and the bts tour in chicago so if you guys are going let's meet up let's go say hi to each other yeah so many music festivities coming up yeah if you guys are going to a festival be safe have fun do not drink and drive go to school all that good stuff i love you guys so much bye